Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is games with stages. So for example, in stage one in this game, we play A Prisoner's Dilemma, and then in stage two, we play The Stag Hunt, and then in stage three, we play Battle of the Sexes. And my payoff is simply the sum of each of those payoffs for the individual stages. So you take my payoff for The Prisoner's Dilemma, add it to my payoff for The Stag Hunt, and add it to my payoff to the battle of the sexes and you sum all those together and that's my payoff for the game there aren't any sort of bonus points or negative points coming in from anywhere else now as it turns out these sorts of games are very common in fact there are infinitely many of them but just to show three other possibilities in the left column we have a two-stage game where we play the prisoner's dilemma and then we play battle of the sexes in the center column we play five consecutive stages of the stag hunt in the right column, we play a stag hunt in stage one, and then we play another stag hunt in stage two. In stage three, we switch things up to battle of the sexes before concluding with matching pennies in stage four. So it should be clear that there are some commonalities among all of these games, but just to be explicit, we have simultaneous moves in every stage, whether that stage is a prisoner's dilemma, battle of the sexes, stag hunt, or matching pennies. We're not taking turns in the individual stage, we are playing simultaneously in those stages. Second, the payoffs from one stage are not directly affecting the payoffs from another stage. If we went and hunted a hare in a stag hunt, then that's not going to change our payoffs for going to the ballet and battle of the sexes. Third, the players know each other's previous moves. So in that center column, when we were playing five consecutive games of the stag hunt, after every round, we see what the other person did. And we, of course, know what we did as well. And because we have that element where we're observing what's happened in the past and we're playing a game over time, now, of course, we're playing simultaneously in each stage, but from stage to stage, the time is going and we're seeing what's happened in the past, that means we're interested in subgame perfect equilibria. So this really is a type of game of, uh, of an extensive form game, and so we're interested in subgame perfect equilibria as well. However, these games are incredibly hard to draw out. So we can't just easily draw a game tree of five consecutive games of the stag hunt because of all the different sorts of branches that we'd have to draw in order to do that. So we'd have to draw for just two stag hunts. We have four outcomes for the first stag hunt. We'd have to draw another stag hunt connected to each of those four outcomes of the first stag hunt to do two stag hunts. And then that would give us 16 outcomes for two stages. If we were to put a third stage of the stag hunt, we would have to have four extra outcomes drawn out after each of those individual 16 outcomes. And so this grows exponentially large it's very difficult to draw these things out and so as a result we're going to want to think about how to analyze these games without a game tree and in fact when we're looking at games that have these sorts of common connections there are actually a couple of theorems that will really help us out so first theorem one says that in the final stage or what you might think of as a sub game if we we're just talking about this in terms of sub game perfect equilibria and nothing else players must play a nash equilibrium in all sub game perfect equilibria why is that? Well, let's think about this list of possibilities here. What that theorem says is that in the left column, when we play Battle of the Sexes, we have to either be playing Ballet, Ballet, Fight, Fight, or we have to be playing the Mixed Strategy Nash Equilibrium. In the center column, in the fifth stage, where we play the Stag Hunt for the fifth time, we either both have to be hunting a Stag, we both have to be hunting a Hare, or we have to be playing a Mixed Strategy Nash Equilibrium that exists in the Stag Hunt. And in that fourth, or rather in the right column, in the fourth stage, in the Matching Pennies game, there's a unique Nash Equilibrium, that's the Mixing Strategies, the Mixed Strategy Nash Equilibrium, that is the only thing that can be played in that fourth stage of the right column game. Now, why is that the case? Why is it that we have to be playing a Nash equilibrium in that final stage? Well, think about this. The payoffs from yesterday and the day before and the day before, all of those previous stages, we can't change that when we get to that final stage. Whatever has happened in the past has happened. Those payoffs are locked in. We can only maximize our payoffs for the current stage. So we must be maximizing in that last period, in that last stage. And if we're both maximizing in that last stage, well, Nash equilibria are the only way to do that. Remember, a Nash equilibrium is a set of mutually optimal strategies. What I'm doing maximizes my payoff given what you're doing, and what you're doing maximizes your payoff given what I'm doing. And so that has to be the case in that last game because we are only affecting our payoffs for here and now. So we have to be maximizing. We have to be playing a Nash equilibrium. So that's theorem one. Theorem two says playing Nash equilibria in every stage or every period is a sub game perfect equilibrium. So what that means is that, for example, in column one on the left here, there is one Nash equilibrium of the prisoner's dilemma. That's where we both play the non-cooperative strategy. There are three equilibria in Battle of the Sexes. So it's going to be the case that 
playing that non-cooperative strategy in the prisoner's dilemma and both of us going to the ballet in the battle of the sexes game that's a nash equilibrium or sorry that's a subgame perfect equilibrium of that overall game in column one it's also the case that playing the non-cooperative strategies in the prisoner's dilemma and going to the fight in the battle of the sexes stage is also a subgame perfect equilibrium and it's also true that playing the non-cooperative strategies in the prisoner's dilemma and playing the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium in the battle of the sexes is a subgame perfect equilibrium. And of course, this means that there are a lot of equilibria here because think about this. In the center column, we have three different Nash equilibria in every single stage of that stag hunt, right? So stag hunt one has three Nash equilibria, stag hunt two have three Nash equilibria and so forth. And so that means there are three to the fifth power number of such equilibria in the stag hunt repeated game in that five stage stag hunt because we have three Nash equilibria in each individual stage. And so you raise that to the fifth power because there are five stages. That gives us three to the five subgame perfect equilibria based off of theorem two alone. So why does Theorem 2 hold? Well, if we're only playing Nash Equilibria, if we're playing a Nash Equilibrium in every single stage, then our payoffs or our strategies from previous periods don't affect what we're doing today. So my payoff for stag hunt number four does not affect my payoff for stag hunt number five. My strategy from stag hunt four does not affect my strategy from stag hunt five. Your strategy from stag hunt four does not affect my strategy from stag hunt five. Basically, we're only trying to maximize for each individual stage when we're playing Nash Equilibria in every individual stage. And so our strategies aren't affecting previous stages or future stages. So that means we have to be maximizing for today in each one of those stages. And if we're maximizing for today in each one of those stages, we have to be looking at Nash equilibria. Now, it's important to note here that theorem two does not say that these are the only Nash, or rather the only, the only subgame perfect equilibria in these sorts of stage games, but rather there are more equilibria possible. And in fact, there are more equilibria possible when the players are playing strategies that respond to previous play. So the theorem two equilibria that are given where we're just playing Nash equilibria in every period and that's a subgame perfect equilibrium, those are actually kind of uninteresting equilibria because we're not actually thinking about this in a strategically rich context. What you do today doesn't affect what I do to you tomorrow. And, you know, that seems a little bit weird. It might be the case that if I do something not so nice to you today, you might not do something no you might do something not so nice to me in the future. You might want to try to retaliate to my bad behavior in a future game. And in fact, that's what we're going to be looking at in the next lecture. We're going to see how when we have these games played multiple times or we have multiple different stages, we can get cooperation possible where it wouldn't be otherwise, where it might be the case that we're looking at a game with a strictly dominated strategy that is better for both of us. For example, like a Prisoner's Dilemma, where mutual cooperation is better than mutual non-cooperation. In a one-shot game of the Prisoner's Dilemma, we're both going to take that non-cooperative action, we're going to defect on one another, and that's going to be bad for both parties. But what we'll see is that when we play different stages, we play multiple stages of a game, it might actually be in our mutual best interest and our mutual rational interest in an equilibrium sense, in a subgame perfect equilibrium sense, to play a cooperative strategy, a strictly dominated strategy, when not doing that will have severe and negative consequences in the future. So we're going to be looking at that in the next lecture. We're going to see how cooperation is possible when we look at stage games where it wouldn't be possible if we were only looking at individual games. And I'll see you in that lecture. Take care.